Hello, welcome back everyone. I Hello. think I think we are live. I think we sound good. Paul, you let us know. Your duty as our sound engineer is to let us know if we're working. <laughs> uh but uh we are joined by Jake this time. Hello, Jake. Hi Dave. Hello. How have you been? <laughs> I've been doing good. It has been ages since I've done any videos. I'm finally getting back into it. I was on such a high of making loads of content and then to go on sick leave for a little while, but I'm, I'm nearly done and it's it's going well. And also, the timing of that intro was actually amazing. I watched that on the um, on YouTube and it was it was very well done. <laughs> was it, was it, were we live to the second? Yep. Perfect. Oh, awesome. I see you and sounds pretty good. Thank you very much. That is good to know. Mm -hmm. uh, have we got the background music as well? Because there's some like super cool adventure music on this. I'm not sure if that's coming through. I think it is. I think mm. we're good enough at this now. <laughs> but we'll wait for confirmation and then right. we will get started. Mm -hmm. So uh, if anyone saw last time, we basically got to grips with the game and then I managed to crash it and <laughs> we couldn't continue. But I've... Uh, I don't think I hear music. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, no. Heck. And um, when you changed over, put on muting ah, us. Ah, there we go. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. We should have music now. Right, anyway, we should have music <laughs> now. I'm confident. Mm -hmm. we, we've ironed out the wrinkles, and that's what this, uh, you know, our first viewers are for. Thank you very much. So, uh, yeah, last time we were just digging about found a couple of bones and we were just gonna send them off to the museum and then we were just about to get into the museum and it crashed but it's a new game it's been out for what two days this yeah, is yeah. the second day right we got music confirmed thank you very <laughs> much so let us continue yeah so i didn't watch all the stream yesterday um but i'm really interested in what this is going to be like because i think this is really the first game we've looked at that has built itself as a proper like real paleontologist simulator right like mm -hmm. not just you know fighting dinosaurs or whatever this is actually based on the work that we do which is going to be interesting it was a fascinating experience we're missing the uh, gravelly voiceover oh i hear it i hear it this is where we got stuck last time. Okay. But look, I can move around. Hey! And again, I'm not really sure of uh, the instruction. Let me check my um, tablet. Okay, okay, we don't have a tablet. Okay, so I'm guessing we just got to walk through the museum. So this is like, do you customize this museum then as you collect things? I don't know, I've not done anything yet. Alright, I'm imagining it basically like Animal Crossing, where when you find something it just pops up here. Or, actually no, this is what I wanted to ask. In the loading screen at the start, he's doing like the uh, preparation with a little uh, drill. Is that what mm. you do in this as well? Do you have to prepare the fossils that you find? or? I, I am guessing that this is what's going to happen now. Oh, These are my boxes. Let's mm -hmm. see if they've got the same labels. we got an unknown species, unknown bone. Uh-huh. Unknown species, unknown bone. Uh -huh. And then that one was Ornithomimus or something. Ooh, okay. And it was a spine. Cool. Yeah, so it's the same things. Uh huh. All right, so I stand here. Let's do the one that we know what it is Ornithomimus right. Edmontonicus, spine uh -huh. set number one. Cool. I'm really interested. Ever... Oh, sorry, go on. Have you ever worked in a museum, Jake? Doing I've. Prep? I've not, well, the prep work is something I've got to do a very small amount of, but I think that it's one of those jobs that I think everyone just describes as like the dream job because it's so cathartic and like really satisfying to do. <laughs> I got to do it once on one of the fish that I found actually uh, with Dave when we did our field work in Shropshire many, many moons ago. And it's really fun. You just get to sit with this tiny little drill and like a tiny little brush and just very delicately carve away, revealing inch upon inch of the fossil. It's so cool. It's so amazing. But yeah, this I've looks, done a mm, little bit. Mm -hmm. but this looks and super familiar for the dinosaur field work I've done of the plaster cast and then breaking that off as well. Did you get oh. to wrap that up as well last time? Yeah, I did. Oh, that's really fun. When I was in Wyoming, I got to do it, and I got so 
messy that all the clothes that I had for that trip are still covered in like white plaster. I've just uh, broken the rock, I think. I was just about to say, did you just put a little crack in it? That's bad. Oh, Oof. don't want to do that. Oh, I don't like this. <laughs> we do not hammer bones like this. Oh, <laughs> what what would you do in this situation? Well. <laughs> the thing is, is that everything that I've ever extracted, like dinosaur-wise on fieldwork, hasn't really ever looked like just a big chunk of rock like this. I feel like if I was in the field and I found this, we would have spent a lot more time in the field chipping off bigger chunks of rock before wrapping them up. Because yeah. that's a lot of empty rock in that, presumably. Yeah, it weighs an absolute ton. I could only throw it, throw it you know, like a few... 10, 20 meters or something in the field. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, I was chucking it around. We had to carry a sauropod uh, leg, like a uh, femur, up a hill, and it is legitimately the heaviest, hardest thing I've ever like had to do. It was, I think, I think I was in pain for about a day afterwards from carrying it up uh, hill. Oh my god! <laughs> This is reckless. This is absolutely the scariest thing that I've done with a fossil. <laughs> but I like how um, the rock is just peeling off the fossil perfectly. That's very nice. That's very, very lucky. I think in reality, could... I, oh, <laughs> I guess I think the bones would be in tiny little pieces. I guess what's happened here, and we can just kind of infer from this that the, the matrix that the fossil is held in is much softer than the bone itself, which is often the case. But in some parts of the world, like in the Morrison Formation in America, um, the the actual rock is just as tough as the fossil because it's all got horrible quartz veins, like crystals running through it. So it's rock hard. So you could not just tap it with a hammer and have nice clean chunks come off. Right. Uh, what's everyone saying? I've been meaning to buy this game. The demo was super interesting. Uh, is this the part where you clean it and put it together? Yep, looks it. Mm. Yeah, so clean up and put together. That's uh, what was said in the last video, and I thought the same when I tried the demo. Exploding Rock is crazy. It's a horror <laughs> game. <laughs> oh, God, it really is. So where are we moving it? Are we moving it to the prep lab or to the manual clean? I What's really want to see the prep lab. Oh, yeah, I actually don't know what the difference is, but I do want to well, see we're going the, to the prep, prep lab. Is. Okay. Do I have it? I think it disappeared, so maybe it went there already? Uh, where is the prep lab? <laughs> oh, it's in I, here. Yeah. Preparation progress in the prep room. Okay. Oh, wait, do you get to do it, or are you wait, having other it's... people do it? Oh, no! Are we just giving it to the prep team to do? Oh, I thought oh, we'd get to no sit fun. and do it. <laughs> oh, no. To be fair, though, like that is kind of what fieldwork is. It's not just one lone... Uh, person doing every single little job. You have a whole team of people who get to, you know, jump in a different part. So you can't get too attached to what you find. Well, it you depends. It, it depends what you are digging up and what oh, kind sure. of project you're on. For me, the dinosaurs. I I find <laughs> it. I prep it. I do everything. Donate it to the museum, and That's then because... I'm the only one who goes to look at it in the museum. <laughs> That's because no one's interested in your little horseshoe crabs or whatever it is you do. It's. <laughs> This is right. dinosaurs, oh. Dave. Great, thanks. I uh, kid. Horseshoe crabs are someone, really interesting. It said something then. I didn't see. I think it said it, someone. It's finished. Let's oh. get it back. Okay. Assemble. <laughs> Ooh. Right. Whilst we're looking at this, uh -huh. you can respond to whether or not we've seen the uh, prehistoric planet. Oh. I. Ooh. Is that out yet, or is it... No, the, 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 the trailer. Oh, I have seen the trailer. It looks really neat. So, um, re recently, I bought a new iPhone. Because, well, sorry, when I say new iPhone, I mean I bought a phone. Because for years, I have not had a phone, and it has really annoyed every single person that I know. And it comes with free trial for Apple TV, so I'm going to wait until uh, that documentary comes out, and then I'm going to sign up to it and watch it. So I'm really excited for it, actually. Um, it looks really interesting. I know very little about it. All I know is that David Andrew is doing the, the uh, narration and that it is animated by maybe the same team that has done the recent Disney live-action animated uh, like Lion King and the Jungle Book, I think? 
I think that's, that's what it is, and it does look pretty neat. Um, it looks like it's going to be, um, what's the word? Sort of just very up to date, very accurate, um, but also just look really good, like really good. Because there's been a, I think it's been a while since a Dennis the documentary has really just looked fantastic and been really well like, directed and things. So I'm quite interested in it. I think it's going to be very. Very interesting. I think it's interesting to see uh, people's reaction to it because everyone seems to really be getting into it and, uh -huh. you know, like looking at it like this is what a paleo documentary should be like, at least in terms of, you know, like paleo fans. It's what they want. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. I think it was advised by um, Darren Nash and Chums. Oh, so yeah. It's uh, pretty good and it's got some nice speculative stuff. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll tell you something though. I've not watched the trailer. <gasps> I'll be honest, I've not watched the trailer since it came out, so I don't really remember everything that happens in it. But I remember thinking how nice it was just seeing dinosaurs living as actual animals and not just kind of <laughs> monsters charging around. Um, it was quite nice. And do you know what else, Jake? Mm -hmm. And chat, I'll tell you something. Okay. I have never watched a dinosaur documentary ever. Shock and horror. I really go. like The Ballad of Big Al. I think you should watch The Ballad <laughs> of Big Al. It's genuinely delightful. Um, it's got such no, good music. I'm it's not going to start. Music. Oh, okay. What, am I, what am I doing? I'm getting another fossil. Okay. <laughs> okay, and, and when I say I've never watched a dinosaur documentary, uh -huh. I will, I will um, give a bit more information, though. Mm -hmm. I'm on my second documentary consultation. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are you consulting? I can't tell you. It's oh, a no. non disclosure agreement, oh, but it should be big. You can tell me. Like, after this okay, stream. okay. Let's just say there's two other documentaries that should be as big, if not bigger, than Prehistoric Planet, and I have been working on them. That is extremely exciting. I know. It when, really is. When you get closer to that embargo, you can tell me all about it, and I can't wait. I will do. I will do. <laughs> oh, that's really neat. Ah! You just oh my, you hit did it, it straight again. away. <laughs> you don't get a choice. I think you'd have been fired at this point, Dave. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Over here is from the prep lab is you just screaming. Ooh. Oh my god, it's like the tiniest little tap, and it just explodes. That's so good. Right, okay. So this is an unknown, but oh, just look at how it's bouncing around. Like... You mm -hmm. would fill this with sand or something. That's actually a really good point. Yeah, yeah. For it sure. looks like it's covered in cobwebs. I don't know if you can see that on your yeah, screen, Jake. That. that is a bit strange. Anyway, yeah, yeah, you'd fill it with sand or something to support it and stop it bouncing around. I do absolutely respect that someone has tried to, like, gamify this process. It's really interesting. Yeah. But okay. as a game that builds its... Oh, my God! <laughs> as a game that builds itself as a very accurate paleontology simulator... <laughs> There's certain elements to this that are a bit hilarious and over-exaggerated. Like, we're paleontologists. We can spot the problems with this, of course. of course. But the thing is, yeah, as you say, no one's ever done this before. So any criticism mm. that we have mm. where, yeah, yeah, we got these shock reactions to how we're treating these bones. But, you know... It's it's head and shoulders above anything in showing how uh, the fossils are actually prepped. Yes. The best example that I've seen probably previous to this is a game called Starbound, which I've been trying to make a video on this for almost a year now. It's one of those videos that I've just had like in the background kind of sitting there, but it is taking a very long time to put together. But essentially... Oh, the bones the are just... falling out. Oh my god. Oh god. That really sucked me. Look at that. <laughs> That's great. Um, really really quickly anyway though, yeah, in Starbound you can find a fossil and you can sit and like uh, hit it out and brush it out. And what I really love about it is that it goes to the process of you find your fossil, first you gotta dig it out with your big pickaxe or your like shovel, and then you gotta take out your kind of smaller hammers and tools, and then when you get right up close to it you take out your little brush. And that's essentially the closest any game has come to it, when it, otherwise it's just, you dig, and then you find it. Ta-da! I hope that makes some sense. 
Does that make sense, Dave? Did I just... That makes sense. Yeah, there's a process, and it's neat seeing it like this. But then that process can be very poorly depicted in computer games as well. Okay. If anyone's seen uh, my uh, video that I did on Archaeologist Simulator, oh my God, then you will that. see <laughs> how it can be done very poorly. That was amazing. One thing that I do like, and I wonder if I don't know if the game will like mention this, but a lot of these bones look really jumbled up in there, which is quite interesting. Like, mm. very chaotic. Very sort of... Yeah, I'm not going to go into Tafanami because Thomas isn't here. But, uh... Brish, that was brish, quite brish. neat how it was all kind of jumbled up within the rock. I remember... I... Oh, sorry, go on. I was going to say, I don't think brushing would come after the drilling. Uh -huh. I'd brush you kind it of first. alternate a little bit as well. Kind of drill a little bit and I brush the sand off. One of the hardest things when preparing when preparing anything with a drill is um, you have to really look at what you're doing and just take out what there is because there's a slight part of you that almost wants to carve out what you're hoping to find. Does that make <laughs> sense? I yes. remember I was really guilty of that, being like, well, it's meant to go over here, so I'll just stay over here. And eventually I realised I was just making what I wanted to appear. What, what am I doing now? Oh, uh, down in the bottom left, softening matrix. Okay. I thought you were maybe Sweet. using um, like a glue. I know I've seen that done where you kind of dab on a little glue to hold all the pieces together. Are those the like, sclerotic, sclerotic rings? On the they look there? indeed like sclerotic rings down I here never, on the bottom left. I can never pronounce that word. That's the little sclerotic bone that sits around the rings. eye. Yeah. Hey, you're supposed to be on this chat. Everyone's chatting and we're not chatting back. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, chat. God, I'm watching Dave's stream. Let's have a look. Da -da 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 -da. Hey, uh, why is the chat not working on the... Um, I know, that's what I was hoping for. On the screen. Hang on, we're going to have to fix right, that. You, you fix that. I'll fix I... that, you talk to chat. Okay, let's have a look. I'm struggling because I don't like Apple, but I want to watch it. Yeah, I totally get that. To be completely honest with you, uh, is that right, gaming? You'll probably be able to torrent it at some point, but I would never recommend that on a live stream. Um, the free trial is seven days long, but it's gone for five days. Well, if you don't care about potentially getting it spoiled, why don't you get the free trial when it's over and then just binge watch the whole thing in a week? That's what I would do. <laughs> Um, react to it on stream. I don't know if you can do that. I know that if there's something on Amazon Prime, I think you can uh, stream it and react to it on Twitch. So there's something like that I've seen, but that would be quite fun to do, but I don't think we could. I think the only way we could do that is if we basically... What's the word? Like We could do a commentary track for it, but we would have to release it without any visuals, and it would have to be like... Um, We'd be like, all right, everyone start in 3, 2, 1, go. <laughs> and then we try and hopefully sync up with it. Um, I don't get to work with dinos. I have to live vicariously through others. Oh, they think that the um, the cobwebs is like the plexiglass, I see. Ah, right. Okay. Them down. Yeah. Oh, okay. what am I using here? I got this tiny little pen. Is that an air abrasion? Maybe. Yeah, you can get those really like high pressure sort of um, hands that sort of blow all the little bit bits of dust off. But again, you've got to be so careful because like all right. the the fish that I work on, if you do that, all the scales just go flying off. Um, so we can't use things like that. It's really interesting though. I can't see the bit on this that I haven't done. Oh, I see. Um. Oh, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> this is really, like... I think it is capturing how satisfying it is, though. Maybe? Yeah. I mean, you're the one playing it. Well, I'm, I'm just moving a thing over a thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, it... It doesn't convey how careful you have to be, how considered, how long it takes. Because, yes. basically, if I do this as quickly as I can, which some people would do, you know, mm -hmm. like the sclerotic ring, done. Yeah. Done. Jawbone. Done. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Skull. Yeah. Like, how long would that take? A week or something to do Absolutely. it properly? I don't know. Mm -hmm. what, on, what am I using now? I can't see anywhere where it send, says what I'm doing. It's probably right on the screen. We just can't see it. 
All right, I'm doing <laughs> some sort of drilling. It's now getting cleaner. <laughs> with a Dremel. <laughs> Again, if we're looking for things to praise, I do think that like the sort of the color and the texture of the buns, though, as you're getting closer and closer to them, is is pretty good looking actually. They're so like perfect, almost too perfect. They are <laughs> too suspicious. perfect. <laughs> Like, if you had cracks in these bones or something, or if they're all broken up, you might have to glue them back together with the right kinds of glues. Mm -hmm. oh, I should have got the bottle of glue from upstairs. got a <laughs> bottle of glue at my house mm -hmm. uh, for when I invariably break fossils. Yeah. You know, I remember, like, years ago, uh, sort of, just as, like, a little hobby. I don't think I was ever going to do it, but t tried to sort of plan out how I would do a video game about geology field work, about, like, mapping. And I realised that the only way it w could really work is if it did capture how laborious that work is. <laughs> and doing that, like, for oh. me, I would find that really fun. But <laughs> many other people probably wouldn't. And I wonder if that's the line you've got to draw with these things. Well, we will see in mm -hmm. a forthcoming live stream of the geology game. <laughs> um, it's mm -hmm. not great. <laughs> it's like a board um, game. Yeah. Victor just brought up a really good point as well, that Prehistoric Planet is literally coming out around the same time as Jurassic World Dominion. So, yay, Dinosaur Summer, but also, like... <laughs> I'm not looking forward to the uh, the Twitter discourse <laughs> that there's going to be <laughs> comparing them. Yeah, I've never watched Jurassic World. Mm, like truck drivers playing truck sim. Yeah, that's actually a really good point. <laughs> and as someone who plays a lot of truck simulator... Mm. <laughs> right, what do you want to send the skeleton part? I want to grab it. Uh -huh. Come here. Just walking around with this. Shh. Have you ever seen anyone drop a really valuable fossil before. Yeah, pro probably me. Have I dropped an <laughs> important fossil? Right, okay. So when I was in the Arctic, um, mm. I had a an unmineralized, kind of unfossilized, it did not turn to rock, and it was a piece of Eurypterid sea scorpion exoskeleton. And mm -hmm. I'm going to recreate this for the stream. All right. With a notebook and a piece of paper. And what <laughs> happened was I cracked the rock and in it was this beautiful, beautiful piece of cuticle. Look at that. It's beautiful and yellow. And what happened? That's what happened. It blew off. The wind was so high in the Arctic that it just picked the fossil up off of the rock. It wasn't like in the rock, it wasn't made of rock it was kind of like a rubbery film that was stuck in between the two layers of rock and when I cracked it open the wind picked it up and it was gone God. and I couldn't find it and mm -hmm. I couldn't find anything as beautiful so I've lost, yeah sorry for the stream who can see my cat's bum hole on the uh, oh camera. goodness gracious well the he likes getting involved, doesn't he? So, <laughs> right, what are we doing? Uh, Have you completed so, that? Or is, oh, it's yeah, missing, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's got arm? his head. It's missing an yeah, arm. Yeah, he's just missing its arm. I so we. Him. Oh, sorry, go on. Don't purr in the microphone. No <laughs> one wants to hear you. <laughs> um, so, when we uh, were out in the field, as you can see now, um, we've got unknown species and unknown bone. Stop it! Okay, you little snoo out of the mic. Uh, but when we were out there, we actually had a, a list of uh, bones to collect that we didn't have. And I thought, you know, that's pretty weird that we would go out specifically looking for those bones. But yeah, it looks like we uh, actually have found them. Hmm. Uh, why can't I... Oh, E. There we go. <laughs> Yeah, so it looks like we found them, which is kind of lucky. Mm -hmm. I get you. Neat. Um, I'm just looking up um, the Ornithomimus uh, species that you're looking at, because I was curious whether or not this is based off of a 
like full skeleton, or if it's just like a little fragment that's sort of been extrapolated. Just having a look, it's quite interesting. Um, so what have what have you found? I I'm just I'm just having a very show quick us how look. quickly you can research. <laughs> I know that it's on display in the um, Ontario uh, Museum, which I would love to go to one day. The right, Royal if Ontario anyone's museum. if anyone's wondering. Like he's actually chewing the winds, like the pop filter wind guard on the microphone. So uh, sorry, <laughs> I can't do anything about my cat. He's a pa now he's licking my beard. Classic. <laughs> <laughs> right. So if anyone's not used uh, one of these. Um, these tools, the little air scribe, what it is, is an absolutely tiny pneumatic drill. Works exactly the same as the drills that you get out in the, you know, in the street that they do the road works with. It's just absolutely tiny. Hmm. And they would have a, uh, an air hose that comes out the back of the pen, which you can't really see here. And um, yeah, the drill bit would be going really, really super fast. And what it can do really well is just uh, ping off little bits of rock that are of different densities uh, and like work its way through the contacts between a more dense and a less dense um, material. So they're really cool. Uh, you can drill your finger and it doesn't hurt because the drill's going in and out so fast that it doesn't actually allow your finger to go anywhere near it when it's in the down position mm -hmm. so kind of tickles it's nice but it's very loud and very vibrate -y, so um fossil prep workers get a lot of um issues with uh, their hands in the long run and also with the inhalation of the dust which is why we should be using that mask in the back which we are not yes naughty naughty <laughs> And you have like big extractor fans and fume cupboards and stuff like that to do all your prep work in. Special yeah, gloves to reduce the um, vibration. That's right as well. Yeah, on really huge specimens, like my friends who work in the um, museum in Indianapolis, where they wear they look like hazmat suits almost. They have they take it really seriously. The uh, the risk of dust. So I don't know if our, our character is doing that or not, but it's. <laughs> We, we're assuming he, he is. Yes, 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 yes. Um, anyway, to come back, the, that actual that specimen is actually based off of some really cool, like, pretty much complete specimens. It's really interesting. And they're found in the Horseshoe Canyon Formation in Alberta. Um, I thought you were going to say Horseshoe Crab. No, sorry. <laughs> I get my little heart up, my heart up every... Heart? Hopes. <laughs> I get my heart up every time a horseshoe crab is mentioned, or I mm -hmm. think it will be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's the chat saying? Everyone's everyone's saying stuff, and we're ignoring them again to do research on <laughs> fossils. All right, sorry. Let's have a look. Everyone's making fun of your cat, and it seems <laughs> to have similar cats yeah. as well. My cat loves to make an appearance during video calls. It's what they do. Have you played the prehistoric kingdom early access yet? <gasps> Ooh, well. Well, well, well. We have not personally played it, but I do believe that our good friend Thomas Clements has acquired it. Is that right? I don't know. Maybe. Oh, I think he's I doing think so. Someone's he's, doing it. He's on it. Thomas Clements is on it. So you will see videos of um, a prehistoric kingdom soon for sure. It does look amazing. Uh, do you have a game that you will never play on the channel? Huh. Ooh, that is an interesting question. I don't think I'll ever play um, Fossil Simulator or whatever it is, which is the carbon copy of Archaeologist Simulator. Uh -huh. They um, they released two versions of the same game mm -hmm. with different titles, and both of them are scams. Oh my god! Um, well. Oh. I personally, um, I know I, I once did a video on Horizon Zero Dawn, um, but I personally decided a while back that I was not going to do any more videos on Ubisoft games because Ubisoft kind of suck as a company. Um, but obviously, if anyone else wants to, like, I'm not going to be like, 
you know, complaining about it, but I personally won't be. I also Turns decided out. after. Oh, sorry, real quick. I also decided after doing the Silta Singularity video that I wouldn't cover any games that have microtransactions, like really overt microtransactions, um, because that's again just something that I'm <laughs> not particularly fond of and don't really want to kind of push, if that makes sense. But again, that's just me. I can't think of hey, any specific games. It turns out that you can zoom in and rotate the bones. Oh, wow, that makes things way easier. <laughs> uh, Dave. <laughs> well, I'm trying to stream and I'm trying to clean my bone as well at the same time. you got time. me yapping in your ear as I well. I got you yapping in my ears, making me making it hard for me to pay attention <laughs> to my bones. Oh, this is so much easier. <laughs> uh, if the devs are watching, they must be... Uh, it must be so annoying watching someone play your game wrong. At 100%, especially someone who is like, oh, as real paleontologists, we should know what we're doing. Uh, yeah, they yeah. made it so hard by not being able to turn the bones around. That's so stupid. <laughs> We are terrible. It's like when I when I first uh, streamed this yesterday, there was uh, a button mm -hmm. in the bottom corner that said continue, and I just didn't see it just because I'm concentrating so oh, hard on on sounding in intelligent and not mm -hmm. messing up my words and keeping on top of the stream. And yeah, I was just sat there with a thinking it had broken, I was just missing this when continue I... button. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, people may have seen uh, last week. Oh, no, not last week. This week. Wait, what is it? Yeah, this week. <laughs> I released a video of uh, Elden Ring, and I had to basically record all of the voiceover, like, post-recording, because if, if anyone wants to hear, like, 45 minutes of me going, oh, 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 God, like, basically that was the entire recording session. I could not get out a full sentence because something would just dive out of nowhere and jump on me. It was so bad. So, yeah, it's hard. It's hard doing this. Talking and thinking at the same time. It's never been my forte. Mm. Um, can I say my main thing that I wanted to say about this game? Yes, please do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, you know, I've not I've not played this. And this is like, you know, it's, it's a pretty interesting criticism. It's nothing to do with the developers. It's not like a mistake that they've made. If anything, it's just like a big issue in paleontology in general. But this game kind of highlights it in an almost hilarious way, because um, if you go on the like store for this game, or if you look at like the loading screen over, the main character is the most generic guy in a Stetson imaginable. And I don't know if the developers know this, but like dinosaur cowboy is such a tired trope, like that we have to deal with at the moment. Um, because uh, I'll try and explain why in a way that kind of makes sense. So, like, depicting paleontologists like that is actually quite damaging for, like, a whole bunch of reasons, but mainly sort of making paleontology feel inclusive to anyone that wants to do it. Because it really suggests, when you see just how many times paleontologists are depicted like this, that the only paleontologists are, like, rugged, adventurous white guys conquering the land, when in reality, paleo is actually diverse and that image stops it from being like much more diverse which is what the field like really needs it sends a message that to be a paleontologist you have to be physically able and a guy and all these terrible things and the other reason is that this stereotype goes so hand in hand with like indiana jones wannabe like lone maverick scientists how like you know the, the kind of rugged hero striding across the badlands and only he alone can you know, solve the mysteries of this land, and he, you know, knows best despite all the peer-reviewed research telling him that he isn't, and all this kind of stuff. And it's so common. There is like a very, very famous now, or infamous now, um, New Yorker article describing a paleontologist, um, and it is just one of the most horrendous things about him, like wiping the the dust off of his uh, wide-brimmed hat and all this. And it's really really we're quite tired of it there was even a documentary i think maybe last year or the year before on discovery called like dino cowboy hunters or something like that and the guy that 
the guy that was in that documentary looks like the the, uh, the main character in this game, and he sucks. He's such like a... <laughs> he's like uh, he's not really a paleontologist. He's just a guy who kind of uh, what's the word like a fossil poacher. He just goes out, finds a T Rex skull, and sells it, and. That's why I'm kind of, when, I, when I first saw this game, I didn't want to touch it because I saw that guy and was like, if I saw him at a, like a conference, I wouldn't even go anywhere near him. <laughs> so my biggest thing with this game, no matter what the gameplay is, no matter how accurate it is, like I just noticed now, are you driving a forklift? Yes. <laughs> Amazing. Um, forklift certified. My main thing that I want for this game is like character creator or something like that just some way out of that like default main character because it is it's pretty pervasive in like merchandise and toys and documentaries and all these things when i don't know any paleontologist that actually dresses like that that is a respectable scientist <laughs> i know that sounds really bad and really petty but like it's it's kind of true i hope that makes some sense I will now get off my you, and be quiet. <laughs> have you ever been to the Society of Vertebrate Paleontology meeting? I have not, and I probably never will, because from what I hear, I I don't remember who it was. I know the last time someone walked around with like a cane with like a golden T-Rex skull on the top, and I, oh, oh boy, <laughs> I do not want to be there. People come in that stereotypical... Paleo they they basically like cosplay <laughs> a paleontologist. Yes, we're we're all paleontologists. You don't need to come dressed up as a paleontologist. <laughs> it's like going to like um I don't know, going to the Oscars or something and coming dressed as one of your movie characters. Like you just don't need to do it. <laughs> it's such a it's such a strange thing. Um Yeah. <laughs> There's a really, really fantastic article. I think it's something like why the like lone paleontologist trope needs to die by Riley Black. I really recommend you Google it. It's a really good, um, really good essay about it. Um, I can't remember what it is. I will find it. And I'll make link it in the chat in a second. Someone wrote in the chat, um, completely unrelated, but I can't decide if I want to go into paleontology or biotechnology. I don't fully understand what biotechnology covers. I'm interested. But it is a great excuse to wear dino themed clothing. Oh, absolutely. And I say this, I'm complaining about dinosaur cowboys. I literally own a pair of cowboy boots. I love the cowboy aesthetic. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> there is nothing wrong with dressing like a cowboy. But in my experience, the paleontologists that look like the main character of this game are the worst paleontologists. And also, Dave, what is your dinosaur doing? Is it like doing a little run on the spot? <laughs> <laughs> that is some Looney Tunes <laughs> running. Uh, I want to turn it around. How do I turn it around? Uh, zoom in and out, interact place, move camera left or right, rotate camera, right mouse button. What? I've got the mouse, right mouse button. Oh, uh, whatever. Oh, no. <laughs> I just saw the collapse. Sure, it dead. I think... Um... Can you do it like where it's lying like lying down on its side, but like the tail's curled up around it? In that sort of like death pose? Well, it's got its head kind of. Oh yeah. Because that's what the um Trilodotomimus uh, like type specimen looks like, I think. It's like um it's got the head and the tail on arched back because I think it's something to do with how the sort of muscles tighten after they die, I think. It's oh, wow, look at that. I like that right. we Took it out of the rock and then put it back on some other rock. Okay, what kind of environment have we preserved? Is it what kind of environment has it died in? Oh, I see. We're doing okay. a a death. Oh, cool thing. Probably wouldn't preserve very well in coarse rock. No, definitely not. Has to be kind of watery. I think mm. maybe that as a sediment. I think that's nice. I like the contrast in that as well. Yeah, that looks really good. Clearly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the other thing we could do is put some water in it, but... <laughs> right, information. I'm going to put it a little bit towards the tail so it's not... There you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's good. So that people can like look down through the, through the window. 
Why can't I turn my camera around? Oh. I'm sure there's a way uh, to do it. We'll have some... Pl We've only got one plant that we can have. That article is way better than the infamous controversy recently about trying to split Tyrannosaurus Rex into three species. I was going to do a video on that, and then obviously I was away, so I was like... That idea was bubbling over in my head <laughs> for like... For like a week of like, should I quickly jump on and make a video about that? My goodness. What a what a strange thing to do. I'm not really fussed either way, but I think the thing that really sucked about that was that it came out on the same day as um, some wonderful friends and colleagues of mine released a paper that they've been working on for so long that's so incredible about um, like colonialism and paleontology. And that paper is phenomenal. And it was completely... Like, media-wise, just bulldozed by this stupid T-Rex paper. <laughs> and that is such a shame. I just, yeah, doesn't that just... Anyway, sorry, I'll shut up. Um, but yeah, it's quite silly. Oh, look at that. We're making it fossilize. <laughs> it died in a little pond. I love it, Dave. I like it. I wasn't expecting you to be able to do that kind of thing. That's quite neat. Hey, that's fancy. I like this. Yeah. Like, j just think about what they had to do technologically to make this. You you have to have a game that's a simulation, mm -hmm. and you have to have a game that's also a you know museum builder. You got to mm -hmm. build all this stuff as well. Mm. So I, I, it's good. I like it. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Wait, resize. I can make it bigger. Really? Okay, not gonna do that's that. Very I'm, strange. I'm quite happy with this. Mm. Is that? Oh, that's me. I'm in the corner. What are you doing? That's what we look like. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Ready to go to SVP. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, uh, let's see if anyone's talking on Twitch. No one's talking on Twitch. Never mind. YouTube's where it's at. The cool people are on YouTube. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm done. Mm-hmm. Okay. Are we going to go out and find new stuff? I guess so. Yeah, I want to see what that looks Unless like. Unless you want to do some inter interior design. Oh my god. Ew. <laughs> I don't want to do interior design. <laughs> Ceilings. Am I? Should I be able to look up at the ceiling? <laughs> I feel like maybe... <laughs> Can you go down? Like, can you lower yourself? I don't know. I can't be bothered to work it out, <laughs> to be honest. But I do like that you can um, change all the design and things. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Hey, look at this. Oh, cool. <clears throat> Ornithomimus edmontonicus. Ornithomimus is a genus of ornithomimid dinosaurs from the late Cretaceous period, lived about 76.5 to 65 million years ago in what is now North America. It's a, a Polish development team, mm -hmm. so we can forgive the language. Its name comes from the word follower of the bird. This dinosaur was a swift bipedal theropod, the ropod. Uh, the fossil evidence indicates that it was covered in feathers. Furthermore, its small toothless beak might indicate omnivorous diet. Species of, of uh, Ornithomimus are characterized by feet with three weight-bearing toes, slender arms, and long neck with bird-like skull. I love it. There it is. <laughs> oh, you just know some kid would yank its head off no. with this kind of... <laughs> yes, I'm almost certain. I probably yeah, would do as well. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I am happy with that. This is a good museum. Where are we, by the way? Ooh. We're just in suburbia. Imagine mm -hmm. living opposite the museum. Hmm. With a giant the, um... silver... Oh, wow. T-Rex skull? No. <laughs> it's got a sclerotic ring. I know, but look at its snout. It's it looks like... like a mix between a Diplodocus... And a T-Rex. Yeah. And maybe a little smidge of dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Mm. That's what we're here for. Mm -hmm. Okay, so do we leave in this? That was the last Ooh. day of my internship. A great adventure just right, came we've, to an end. We were an intern and now we're not. 
Also, real quick, I to familiarize myself before this video, I watched the trailer for this game on Steam, and the main character's voice was not this gravelly in the trailer. In the trailer, it was like, hey, it's me! And in this, he's like, that was my last day of the internship. <laughs> It's so, so funny. There was a chance to work in the museum for longer. The decision was a no-brainer. Going to the museum. The oh, look, he's back. Although the place wasn't <laughs> new to me, this particular moment felt. Different. And that's when I got a call from <laughs> Commissioner Gordon. <laughs> Wasn't there a T-Rex in Batman? Hasn't he got one in his Batcave? He does. I was going to say this is something that chat will know, but it's something that you know. So oh, I think so. I think he does. Right, let's okay. go dig in again. What was yeah. it? I wasn't listening. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, is he wanting us to go through here? I can't see because there's a cat in... Whoa, there's a T-Rex. Oh my gosh. Okay. He's a very straight T-Rex. admit, the bigger skeleton the director was talking about was indeed a huge one. I was oh my goodness. Struck when I was faced with the legendary Tyrannosaurus. Even in my dreams, I would never fathom that our museum was in possession of such a treasure. Uh, where are we up to in the chat? Aubrey turned up and she said it's a great excuse to wear your dino-themed clothing. Did you read that one out? I sure did. Alright, I wasn't listening. I didn't realize it was Aubrey though. I'm sorry. Hi, Aubrey. <laughs> uh, are we caught up with the chat? Yes, we're all caught up. We've not had a message um, for a while. Well, someone, someone write us a message. <laughs> it's, it makes putting the bones in very easy. I would like more of a challenge with <laughs> inserting my bones into the right place. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's all right. <laughs> we'll talk about it later. Yeah. I hope no one from Palace is watching. Oh! Oh dear, and you're fired once again. <laughs> what?! <laughs> How did that happen? Is this the real bone? We've not cast it or anything, have we? Actually, that's a good point. Like, one of the... If you're ever in a museum chat and you want to know if what you're looking at is a real, you know, fossil skeleton that's been mounted or if it is just a cast. I'm going to say just a cast. That's not to diminish. Like, casts are amazing. No! Oh, my God! <laughs> what have you done? I dropped the T-Rex skull. <laughs> just only half of it, so it doesn't really matter. Right, out the way. Yeah. Well, what I was going to say was that real skeleton, like, a real fossil bone tends to be supported by really intricate sort of metal Ow. frameworks and casts. <laughs> I was trying to tell people something interesting, but I'm just too distracted by you dropping. <laughs> How am I supposed jacket. to get this bit in? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. This is not going well. Uh, that was me boasting about how easy it was and needing mm -hmm. a challenge, and now I can't do it, and I've just mm -hmm. broken, like... An invaluable T Rex, the only complete T Rex skeleton. Mm -hmm. My goodness. I know, yeah, the only a complete T Rex skeleton is a fun way of looking at it. Sorry, T Rex. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Can I chuck it? No. I, you probably shouldn't. Should we go out into the museum and scare people with it? Sure. Just be like, rawr! <laughs> One fun thing about, like, um, theropod dinosaur skulls is that they actually have, essentially, like, a built-in handle. <laughs> like, just the way that they've evolved, like, above the... You know, like, to the top? Yeah, the way, where your mouse is, yeah. You yeah. can, like... Uh, no, a little bit forward. Like That like little... A, no, not a little nub. <laughs> <laughs> what? Which handle are you talking it about? It doesn't matter. Like in this, the, this arch yeah, bit here. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Just because of like the center of gravity, you can like carry casts like by that, and I'll be completely fine. And just it just reminded me because I've carried the um, in the University of Manchester in the UK, they have a uh, cast of a Gorgosaurus, I think, and I've had to carry that skull like <laughs> pretty much across the city once, and you get some good looks. It's 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 fun. 
that's right, you can carry them. Oh, apparently, maybe we misread it, or maybe there was a mistake that Onatomimus lived and did not live 65 million years ago. That's true, the, the dating of that was refined over time, wasn't it? Um, I can't remember what it said on the board now. I can't remember what it said. Let's just leave it at we're right. Listen to <laughs> us. Where's this bit go? Oh, you're back. Yeah, there you go. What's that? It's a, essentially the wishbone, isn't it? It's a, the egg layer. <laughs> the egg layer. Overpositor. <laughs> I don't... In in my invertebrate terms. <laughs> I was going to say, get your... <laughs> maybe... Oh, maybe... You... Okay. Jump. There we go. Wonderful. Oh, I'd get fired straight away. Right, we're ready. It's going to come to life. <laughs> T-Rex is completed. You can exit the museum. Okay. You did it. Well done. Now leave. <laughs> Bye. A completed skeleton of Tyrannosaurus looked majestic, and I had the honor to contribute to it. Yet another beautiful moment that has been etched in my memory forever. That's cool. Yeah, I like how it's kind of like a looking back at his career. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's quite nice. I was pretty amped up. My marks were great, so I didn't anticipate any problems finding a job. But that was about to change soon. For the first six months after graduation, my focus was to find a job in the field of paleontology. Yeah, good luck. I was just thinking, like... <laughs> so I oh, I imagine. The paleontologist job I could find, but the jobs were either already taken or I lacked the experience. Oh, there we go. After six months, mm. I started looking for any job, but that also didn't come easily. Yeah, I that's the university experience. It sure is. <laughs> One year after graduation, things finally started to turn around. Although it wasn't exactly how I had imagined it. Is he just stood outside looking up into the sky? Is that his job? Oh, is this where you were before? No. Is this my house? Oh. I need to tidy up a bit. <laughs> oh, I can. You, you actually can. Oh, <laughs> are we actually good? <laughs> I like a uh, placeholder in the bottom left. Report missing name. Oh yeah. <laughs> nice, nicely done. You what am I doing? That. I'd maybe go in the house. I think, maybe. Nope. Hello. <laughs> I'm sure it told oh, hang us. On. Just did... oh, 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 that makes sense. Nope, no, it's doesn't. empty. Mm. What are we doing? I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> Is there like a, go out? a quest log? Are so you trying to hop the fence? Yeah. E. E does things. Um, do you have like a log of like your quests and things? Oh, let's open this. Ah, ah. <laughs> the thing we were looking at this time. My grandfather left his car workshop to me in his will. Oh, that I died. particularly talented when it oh. came to the automotive world, but I knew a thing or two. And at that time, the thought of becoming a car mechanic was at least something. Ooh, okay. What a weird and crazy so is this going to be our fossil hunting mobile? Grandpa bought an old rush I hope so. That was clearly <laughs> on fixing, but I, didn't scare like, I don't really care about cars, but I must admit scary. I did fall very deeply in love with our pickup truck when we were doing field work in America. I didn't catch up with his spirit, and he had to pass it on was very fun. project. I decided to clean up the workshop for him. The voice sounded like it changed then. Maybe. <laughs> um Dad, he's so messy. <laughs> I don't want to hold this. Do we have to fix the car? Because, no offense, like, you know, like, 
just warning you now, chat. We're not gonna have a great deal to like <laughs> say about this. I don't think <laughs> I'm speaking for myself there. Oh. oh. <laughs> All right, hang on. From Is it here. possible to be somewhat in academic paleontology he while also being in, in another completely unrelated oh. field? Hey, oh, people ask us really interesting questions here, and you're throwing garbage. Doesn't matter. <laughs> we're, we're, I've got my garbage bag stuck on top of the shipping no, no, container. No. This is a really Who has a shipping container? <laughs> it's a really interesting question, Dave. <laughs> All right, what's the question? <laughs> is it possible to be in academic paleontology while also being in another completely unrelated field? Yes. Absolutely. Entirely so. I know so many paleontologists who started out in like vastly different areas of, of research. And it's wonderful. It's one of the few like fields of science where you can come from it from any like angle. There is there are roles in paleontology not just in fieldwork, but in coding and liaising with governments and art and all sorts of like strange things. So any like, you know, all sorts of different skills are, are transferable to it. What is th that looks like an explosive barrel from any other game, but you're just throwing it in the skip. I'm not having a good time throwing it in the skip. I don't think it's meant to go in the skip. But yeah, Paul, I hope that makes sense. Like, you know, there's no reason. I mean, we've both come at it from an academic angle. There's loads of paleontologists I know who oh if not. <gasps> Plot twist. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it is it is a real simulator. It's just boxes of old fossils that you've forgotten about. During the school trip, despite it being over fifteen years ago, I felt the exact same mix of excitement and joy that I'd felt on that beach years ago. That's delightful. Who finds a Velociraptor claw. This is um, this is a bit in. I, I love, I love, love, love the game uh, Firewatch. And at one point though, you find a raptor claw, and he's just like, oh look, I found a fossil. How neat! And it's like, if you found that, like that's amazing. It's like one of those incredible things. Um, yeah, that's neat. Paul, I didn't respond to your question, and I forgot yeah, what it know. was. Just talking about different avenues into paleontology from different fields, which I think is a really important thing that is not... Like, we were talking earlier about the representation of paleontologists in media, and it's really very limited in how paleontologists are depicted in documentaries as all being, you know, academics. I don't have to decide between my two favourite academic disciplines that wouldn't... Be cool. Yeah, like, I know someone who, um, like, started off in like genetics and then kind of tiptoed into like paleontology as well and now kind of just the just the both of them it's really you know it's one of those fields that you can approach it from any way you like so long as you have a desire to hmm. research paleontology you're essentially a paleontologist oh yeah yeah i hate when people are like um oh now you've done field work you're a real paleontologist because like you can be a paleontologist. I like <laughs> paleontology world. Yeah. Um, mm. Okay. So basically, this could be you. You could be out in your truck. We've already done this. This was us. Oh, that's you. I see. Hmm. Okay, I'll put that on my wall. <laughs> Right, um... Oh, we're back to playing with toys. Hard. <laughs> oh, what, what, what are we doing? Oh no, that's a leg. Is this like a little, like, kind of tutorial type thing for the... Yeah. Yeah, I get you. I think that's something else. Can you rotate it? Ooh. Um... <laughs> Technically. No, come on, I had that. Put it there. Yeah. That goes here. That goes on the other side. Or there. No, it goes here, of course. If non-avian dinosaurs hadn't become extinct, uh, what do you think they'd become? That's a fun question. I don't think... Um, obviously, people do love their dino sapiens. 
Um, oh, I don't. Dear. I don't think we'd end up. I'm not going to go down that avenue. I don't think we'd end up with something like that. I mean, I think the thing you got to remember is that dinosaurs were already around for so many <laughs> tens of millions of years, hundreds of millions of years. If they continued for another, you know, sixty six. They could have achieved all sorts of wonderful things, um, but I don't know if it would be that radical. I, I don't really know. I always love thinking about this kind of thing, like speculating about hyper-intelligent um, dinosaurs. So, but, oh, so um, there but was I, a thing called Trudon Man. Yeah, but I think that's kind of this idea humans have where we are the peak of evolution, and that's where anything would go if given enough time. Does that make sense? Is that, I think that's what it kind of comes from, yeah? Yeah. Mm, and it which... sort of looked like this guy. Oh, I see. I see what you're doing. Yeah, I've got a pen. Yeah. They're basically like the Silurians in Doctor Who, which are the most inappropriately named thing in anything ever. Does that make sense? How could they be from the Silurian if they suppose... Oh, yeah. It doesn't matter. Um... <laughs> this is probably the best drawing that I've ever done in my life. It looks incredible. I'm not an artistic person. My most vivid memory of the sort of uh, Trudon man is the Top Trumps card, and I think that's the same for a lot yes! of people. Yes! <laughs> uh, it's going to be a Paleocast episode uh, pretty soon, that. So if you want to know more about it. What's it? It's going to be a Paleocast episode. A oh, really? Man. Oh, yeah. cool. So, okay, uh, so, so there is there is science behind it. It wasn't hmm. just like, oh, I think that in the future it would look like a person. Uh huh. True, Don. Oh, I can't wait for that. So yeah, so those that don't know, Dave also does the PaleoCast podcast, and apparently there's an episode of True Don Man coming up. So that's very exciting. Well, I'm writing it at the minute. Uh huh. Can you give us Don Man? Listen, <laughs> this needs to from Land of the Lost. It really does. Oh man. Loves. Uh huh. Did you ever do this at school? Uh, I I don't know what this is. <laughs> if it's this specifically, no. It measures compatibility. Uh huh. Loves. Jake. Uh huh. Ah. Uh, this is really great footage for everyone. This is phenomenal. I hope everyone's really enjoying this. At a B. That's my name, in case anyone is... <laughs> L0. O is 1, 2, 3. V is 0. E. 1, 2... I d S zero. I think I was born slightly too late to know what this is. So this is what we used to do at school. Uh -huh. Three, three, two, two, six, five, four, one, one, nine. <laughs> Two, ten. Oh, it's it's just thirty-one percent, Jake. It's not going to work out. Oh, that's such a shame. Jurong Man is such a cutie. Oh well. <laughs> it could have been. It could have mm -hmm. been. Wait, hang on. This has got to be the cover image. <laughs> Someone capture that. How'd you capture it? I'll, I'll like F twelve or something. Oh, it was. It was F twelve. <laughs> Get me. Right. Um, what? Oh! <laughs> I love that. Hang on. F12 again. <laughs> right, let's go dig in fossils. Um, With... <laughs> Who moved the shipping container? Oh, no. <laughs> I was only in there for five minutes. <laughs> Where did we get this huge military-grade truck from? <laughs> um, oh, my goodness. We were asked, um, what do we think of the Mastosaurus Rex and the other evolved dinosaurs from Peter Jackson's King Kong? I have not seen that film in ages. But I really like the creature design in the more recent King Kong film, the Kong Skull Island, I think it was. There was sort of like dinosaur-esque creatures in that, and I thought they were really like well-designed. A lot of the time, 
fake dinosaurs, you know, not fake dinosaurs, but like hypothetical dinosaurs end up looking a bit freaky. But they looked freaky, but also, I don't know, they look pretty decent. Um, the first I'm going to have to quickly look up what that looked like to remind myself. Um, but I, I, you know, I can see the, the enjoyment in sort of speculating these things, but it tends to just... I don't know. It's not really my interest, but it is neat. Who cleaned the garage? Oh my gosh. And kitted it out with stuff. Hey, fun fact really quickly about um, the modern King Kong uh, movies. The most recent one, the Kong ah, King Kong vs. Godzilla, uh, in the opening credits, it starts off with like this montage of sort of artwork of uh, King Kong and Godzilla. And one of the drawings of King Kong is actually stolen from a friend of mine, oh. uh, Matt Dempsey, who is a very famous now paleo artist. And they went back through his like deviant art and found a sketch of uh, Kong that he did years ago. And they literally just copied it and put it in the film without crediting him. How crazy is that? It's Can he so do weird. anything about that? Not really, because it's, <laughs> it's a massive film and he's just... It's so weird. I don't think he wants to really kick up too much of a fuss about it, but like, I, w I remember like him calling me the day after he saw it, or the day he saw it, I should say, and what a moment that must have been. <laughs> it's so strange. Right, we're going fossil hunting, finally. Yes, I'm looking forward to seeing this. What's everyone saying on Twitch? Oh, we got Twitch people! Oh my are you God. from Big Paleo? How are you? Yes, yes we are. <laughs> uh, we got raided with a party of seven people. Oh my goodness, that's exciting. And six of them, we've lost one, but six of them <laughs> have stayed. Hellos. Oh. Hello, Zoe. How are you? Hello, hello, Twitch. Sorry we've ignored you. Oh my goodness, okay, I've got to open that up now. No, really I'm going gonna, gonna to keep Twitch open. You keep YouTube open. Sounds good. Because I like Twitch more. Twitch people. Twitch is cool where it's at. You just... Okay, fine. Um... Did they say if we big paleo? Well, are we big paleo? Yeah. <laughs> I have been accused of being big paleo before. You, you know what? I I am big paleo in that I work for an oil company. So I I am one of the few that actually has a useful job that gets paid money. Why Why is my car so far away? I've had like flat earthers, hollow earthers, uh, people like this have accused me of being in the pockets of Big Paleo before and I wish I had Big Paleo money whatever that is because <laughs> I do not um, but yeah anyway it's really nice that we've been raided hello uh, Twitch chat um, this is Dinosaur Fossil Hunter a game supposedly about being a real paleontologist and we've been kind of seeing how accurate it is in some cases it's very accurate and then in other cases it's very exaggerated but it's actually quite silly so it's still quite fun. We're enjoying it. And we are the PaleoCast Gaming Network, and we are pro-paleontologists, academics, mm. uh, industrial, <laughs> media, outreach, everything. Yeah, we, me and Dave don't really work that much in dinosaurs, especially Dave, um, but we're very interested in paleontology and how it's represented in the video games, which is basically what the Pelucas Gaming Network does, and it's really fun. It's quite fun, kind of, I don't know, not just doing outreach in terms of, like, standing very boringly doing lectures, but instead, like, someone has just asked me if I were to dig up Godzilla, would you love to, like, you know, if Godzilla was a real dinosaur, would you love to dig up his fossilized remains? That's a question no one ever asks me unless I do this, so it's very exciting. I would be very afraid if I dug up a real Godzilla, because he's huge. I think it would take... <laughs> More than just It'd take a person. while. However, there is a really cool fossil shark that was named after Godzilla because it has fins that are very similar to Godzilla's spines, which is quite fun. Um, I would have loved to have found that because that fossil is really pretty, which is saying something for a fossil shark because fossils, uh, sorry, sharks don't really have very good skeletons. So fossil sharks tend to just look like smudges with a few teeth th uh, thrown in. So yeah, the Godzilla shark fossil is amazing. I'd have loved to have found that. Um, but yeah, if it was a real dinosaur, I would, yeah, that would be very fun. It would be a 
big on a scale like no other. So I have not seen this part of the game yet, Dave, so you're going to have to... I've not seen this train. part of the game yet. Oh, okay. Right, we need some petrol to drive down the road a tiny bit. Mm -hmm. Hold to fuel. Okay, give me some petrol. <laughs> yeah, stick it under that. Oh, canister is already full. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Right, you go in there. We got a load of boxes. We got equipment. Is that just the generator? Where's like a hammer and stuff? Oh, that's all on top. I think mm. we're good. Okay. This is fun. <laughs> For the first time, I guess it might get a bit much. Do you actually get to on. drive? Yeah. Oh my goodness, look at you go. <laughs> we need some uh, John Carpenter soundtracks. As per, as per our usual fieldwork uh, accompaniment. Uh, where do we go? Um, right, we need the sat nav. Oh. Hmm. Right, map. Uh, I don't know where we're going. I think we just. Do you have to go, go anywhere out? In particular, or do you just kind of go wherever you like? I think you are supposed to go. Unless you didn't pick up everything and it would give you a, a marker. You know what I mean? Oh, the oh. road's blocked. Being in the mine without any problem, I noticed the excavation area in its lowest part. This is where I was to start my search. A few days earlier, a strong wind had destroyed the excavation equipment. So my first job was to clean up the exploration area and set up... I'm slowly place. sliding towards it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. A strong wind has messed it up. Mm -hmm. Look at these little baby taps. Tip, <laughs> tip. <laughs> when you did um, Fieldwork in the Arctic, did you have any, like, kind of freak weather that disrupted everything? I know you uh, it snowed things. once. Uh -huh. It was very windy. Mm -hmm. Uh... But the hardest thing was just walking and walking and walking. We didn't have any transport. Well, we, we had a, like a helicopter into the field because we were uh -huh. so remote. But uh, once we were there, just walk. That's it. And I was the only one who came with a decent backpack. So I oh. uh, ended up being the pack horse. Mm -hmm. And I had like a backpack filled with everyone's rocks, not just my own. Because... <laughs> Everyone came with, you know, like the tiniest little uh, outdoors recreational hiking kind of bags. Mm -hmm. And so I was the biggest one on the trip. Like, I weigh 100 kilograms. Like, I'm not a tiny person. Uh -huh. And the the ground in the Arctic is, is not <laughs> the most stable. So it was really muddy. It was really snowy. And everyone mm -hmm. would just walk over all of this, like mud flat like a, a river that basically went through the sediment mm -hmm. and i would try and i would just disappear down into like to my knees oh. to my thighs in just the mud and they just had to pull me out we had a dust devil one day which is like a little Whoa. mini tornado full of dust which is very scary um i saw victor's question but i am going to come back to it while we're on this topic of like freak weather and things what is the most dangerous paleontologic activity that is a very fun Ooh. question. Me and you have both worked in places with mountain lions. That's quite yeah. fun. <laughs> a mountain lion maybe tried to kill me once, mm -hmm. as did a snake. Yes, so, I've been there with snakes, yeah, rattlesnakes and things. Wildlife, water, uh, availability. Uh, there's a lot of things that you have to stay aware of. Yeah, depending on where you are, there are some really dangerous things. Even just in the UK, I've had, um, you know, Field work suddenly ruined by the tide because no one was watching it. Oh, <laughs> the tide. I forgot about that. <laughs> the tide is a oof, a formidable <laughs> foe to the paleontologist. But I, I think the, the most dangerous thing I've ever had on field work was we were walking down a dry riverbed and then suddenly it, it rained and we hid under a bridge on the riverbed, failing to realize that, oh, now there is water in the river, eventually. The river might flood, and it did quite rapidly, and we had to run for our lives. That was quite fun. I can't think of any particular 
the most dangerous paleontologic activity? Uh, people. Probably, yeah, that's actually a really good point. You wander into uh, private land, maybe? <laughs> Some guy with a, a bad temper mm -hmm. and a gun gets annoyed mm -hmm. at you? That can happen. Um, yeah, there's also, it's a, I, I guess the most dangerous thing would be for all of these things to happen at once. That's my answer. Um, I can't think of anything else really, like, really, really dangerous. Alright, well, so I'm going to circle back to your math question in a second. I need to give Vic this question, answer, otherwise it will disappear off the chat. I'll forget about it. If you could bring back a non-even dinosaur slash prehistoric animal, what would it be? I think we talked about this last time, didn't we? Or at some point we've talked about the, the sort of the ethics of animal resurrection. Um, um, my answer for a dinosaur is always some giant sauropod because I think just seeing a land animal that big would yeah. be amazing. Um, but if it's any prehistoric animal, oh my gosh, there's so many different, uh, different fish and insects and all sorts of magical things that I would just love to see how they moved. Um. Like a Dunkleosteus. Dunkleosteus is amazing, but no one knows. Dunkleosteus. What's it? Dunkleosteus. Dunkleosteus. Is that not what I said? Did I say Dunkleosteus? You said Dunkle. That is ridiculous. Oh my god. Dunkleosteus. I do apologize. It's Dunkle's um, bone. Oh my god. I'm really scared of him mispronouncing that forever now. Anyway, no one really knows what the rest of his body looked like. I would quite like to know. <laughs> I think that's the only reason I would really want to bring something back, just to see what it... Like, after, once I'd done that, I'd probably panic and be like, I now don't know what to do with this. And I don't have a problem with math for how much math is actually in paleontology. It depends. I sometimes have to use R. But I know my accent cut doesn't have Oh, don't get into R. R. And it's, it's pretty horrendous. <laughs> I'm not a fan of math. In fact, I'm really bad at it. Um, I don't like it. No. What are you doing here, Dave? What's what's this? I'm putting flags on rocks that are huh. underground. But actually, I think I've just put them on the ones that are over on on top of the ground. <laughs> but never mind. What's At least the, you know where they are. Yeah, what's the thing you're using? We're using geophysics. Gotcha. It helps you. I see that there's a rock underneath the trolley right mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. You can see with your own eyes it's working. Yeah, I chatted at great length about geophysics. Okay, I, I won't have, have you um, repeat that. Uh. Look, here you go. Here's a rock that's under, well, sort of underground. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's enough of that. Let's get <laughs> digging. Wait, right, which one do you fancy? This one. What these boulders? <laughs> yeah, oh. these are. So, the digging. Mm -hmm. I don't really like it. Okay, my only worry at this point is um, none of this rock is in situ. Yeah, that's um, the thing. Mm, so this isn't like, you know, nice solid rock that's actually part of the ground. These are loose boulders that could have been carried from anywhere. I mean, they're quite big, so they probably haven't traveled far. But when excavating fossils, it's really good to know kind of where you are in the rock record and kind of know the direction of things. This is... It's very. It would be very odd. I mean, obviously, you can hunt for fossils in random boulders, but for research, it's not particularly informative. If that makes sense. Watch this. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> that is working extremely out. fun. For me, it would be yep. Tyrannosaurus Rex and Dinosuchus. Ah, oh, very good choice. Oh, uh, dinosaurs. I don't have a favorite dinosaur. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't have a favorite one. Um, what about any prehistoric animal? But yeah. any prehistoric animal, it'd have to be the ones that I work on, obviously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, sea scorpions, nice big one. I want to see what it. I want to make friends with it. Yeah. Uh huh. And ride it. Oh, okay. I think it would be nice just seeing how they sort of interacted and what their behaviour was like, I suppose. I'm trying to think of what fossils do we know like so little about that if, yeah. someone, gave me, if someone gave me the option to 
resurrect anything, like, magically. I would feel like if I did summon, like, a T-Rex, I'd be wasting it. Because we know quite a lot about <laughs> I'd be T-Rex. wasting the T-Rex. Yeah, I'd be wasting that. I'd be wasting the wish. <laughs> I feel like it's probably more important to maybe resurrect, like, some really important bacteria from, like... <laughs> Uh, three and a half billion years ago or something. Something really, really important. I don't know. I think what I love most is that if you were to, again, in this magical scenario where some genie is resurrecting something, if you were to just be like, oh, anything, surprise me, then, like, the 99% chance that whatever they resurrected, no one has ever even seen a fossil of before, which is quite exciting. Because our fossil record is so... Such a tiny portion of what actually lived. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't listening. I was chucking rocks around. <sighs> of course. Of course. <laughs> uh, none of these have fossils in. No. So okay. what I'm doing, mm. other than being super strong, yeah, uh, is I'm finding boulders, mm. digging them out of the ground with a mm -hmm. spade. Mm -hmm. They're all loose yeah. and rolling around. So what you have to do is you have to get the rubbish off the top of them. Uh huh. All the loose dirt. Mm -hmm. Then you can pick it up, have a look at it, see if there's any bone. Can't really see any bone. Mm -hmm. But a quick way of doing it is I have this Geiger counter. Oh, yeah. And that's told me that there's no bone in it. Right. I didn't think that was a thing. Well, so, fun fact, dinosaur bone is very slightly radioactive. Because dinosaur well, bone in general is very porous, and all those little openings are a perfect place for minerals to be deposited and uh, sort of precipitate inside. I know this because when I left field work with a bag full of dinosaur bones, um, airport security <laughs> asked <laughs> what's in your bag. <laughs> Because dinosaur bones glow on the, the scanners because they contain little wow. trace elements of like potassium and things like that, um, slightly radioactive um, elements. It's really interesting. They're, they're no more radioactive than like a banana is, but it's it's really interesting because of the the way that they they work. What's the word? Chemically in the rock. It's really cool. So, so kind of work. Last stream yesterday, hmm. I said that. It wouldn't work. I was like, <laughs> no, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, you can't scan for radioactive fossils. Well, I don't know if you could scan it through the rock. You know what I mean? I think it's so weak. I don't know if you really could, to be honest. So the game's do. devs mm. were like, oh, cool stream. They didn't say that. They were just like, we saw you stream. Yeah, yeah. And we had a nice little chat. Uh -huh. And then they sent me. A um, an article to uh -huh. radioactive radioactivity in fossils. There you go. To say like, look, we've not made it up. This is an actual thing. Well, that's pretty cool. Because I thought they'd made it up. Like, I didn't I guess, mind. Yeah, that they yeah. Made it up. But I mean, for the stuff that you work on, I don't think it would apply in the slightest. But for big chunky dinosaur bone, totally. Right, and I guess I guess it's weird because obviously there can be other sources of radioactivity in in rocks like granite and like oh like you know certain crystals I should say sorry are um, radioactive, but still I don't know it's sorry I'm just I'm watching you through these rocks. So that said, oh no, it said empty stone. Yeah, we're not we're not having any luck. Hmm. Like we've not... cleaned a big bit. Like should I be doing something else? I'm not sure. Do we do we need to go and do some underwater paleontology? What? There's all rocks down there, aren't there? Uh-huh. Gotta switch this on. And put the hose somewhere. I don't know how to do it. Okay. Maybe you use that generator. Oh, you already put the generator. This What no, give me all right, well, you figure that out. Um, some fans asked, oh, Victor, again, um, would you make your own Jurassic World, Prehistoric Kingdom, 
Oh, what genus and species of dinosaurs and prehistoric animals would you have in your park? If you want to know the answer to that, I have a series on this very YouTube channel where I made my very own prehistoric aquarium using a Minecraft mod, and I loved it. So that's my answer to that, is basically almost oh. everything I did in that series. Oh, look at you go. I don't know how to do I, it! I thought, I thought you'd figured it out. Press E to turn device on. Uh -huh. Okay, now... You're drowning. I'm drowning. Yeah. Um, this should be the out hose, shouldn't uh -huh. it? I, I, I guess. Is it? Where does the water go once you've? I don't know. Right. Let's just go down here. Uh huh. Oh right, we're sucking out the water now. Are you? It looks like well, you're sucking I'm, up the ground. It looks like I'm sucking up the ground. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't die! Oh, right, okay. So you suck up the ground, and then you get the rock. Okay. Okay. At least it'll be lighter. <laughs> Come here. Oh, my goodness. Hey Dave, how likely is it that robots will completely replace paleontologists? Never. Yeah, <laughs> it's not a serious question. Don't worry, I've been. <laughs> Although in my case, they could quite easily replace me and still be as ineffective. Oh. So what have they done to you know like improve technological uh, fossil collecting? They've mm. got um, drones that can use UV. Mm hmm to look for um, fossils in the same way like you can see scorpions at night with a UV thing. You can also yeah. see uh, some fossils with UV light. There's all sorts of cool gadgets that exist now. We recently, um, in my like like lab in Birmingham, we've bought a structured light scanner, which is the most exciting thing in the world. So. Um, if you've got quite a small fossil, they're quite easy to scan because you can just stick them in all sorts of different machines. But if you've got a really big fossil, like in a huge boulder, um, there's not really a CT scanner big enough to put them in unless you go to like a, a zoo, and even then it's not like powerful enough most of the time. But a structured light scanner is essentially, it just looks like you're shining a rock with a torch, but it is recording the surface texture and depth, a 3D model basically. Um, what I'm trying to say is that you can shine this light over your item and it will render a one-to-one -one digital model, a digital replica of that fossil, and it's incredible. And I know that it's working because a colleague of mine sent me a picture where he'd, he'd scanned himself, so he now has a perfect digital model of himself, and he wants to 3D print them and make official action figures of himself, which is incredible. Uh, who's this? I want an official action figure of whoever this is. <laughs> That is uh, Richard Dearden, who is a very awesome fish researcher. <laughs> he works I want on... an action figure of Richard Dearden. He does <laughs> MMA. Yeah, he works on um, <laughs> Acanthodians, which are a very freaky little fish. Right, I want a fossil. This isn't mm. cool. This is too much like real fossil hunting. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, so when when I was doing the field work in Apart Wyoming... from being had... underwater. <laughs> I know, that's, that's wild. I've not done that before. But we had um, the BBC following us around for like a few days, like oh, filming us you? and asking us questions for years. And they asked me a question that I still find phenomenal, which was, can you let us know before you find anything so we can film it? And the more I think about what that implies, uh, it actually hurts my brain. <laughs> I, had to really, I had to really like calmly explain that I can't know what's inside the rock until it comes out. <laughs> you can have an inkling about whether a rock will be good or not. And yeah, you that's get a, mm -hmm. You get a, an eye for what is a good rock uh, uh -huh. once you've, you know, like, worked a, a certain outcrop. But um, it's kind of like doing a scratch card Yeah. after that. It's like, good luck. Probably won't win, but if you do it enough times... You might get something rubbish. Mm -hmm. 
at one point we were like, well, we've got this line of vertebrae, that kind of like a tail vertebrae that runs through the rock. So presumably it's going to be, we're going to have the next vertebrae along. Do you want to film that? So they sat around with the cameras and the tail ended. <laughs> like there was nothing there. Um, yeah, it was very awkward. Are we doing something wrong? Uh, when you say we, I'm just watching. <laughs> No, I'm you're involved in this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not 100 percent sure. Um, <laughs> the markers that are around you, what are they saying? Are they just telling you where things are? And... Okay, uh, let's have a look at blah 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 blah. Mm -hmm. That was the original one where she sent me out to look for a hip bone, a right arm bone, and a vertebra. Electricity generator, water pump, halogen lamp. Like, all of our stuff is here. Uh huh. Maybe I should go around to, like, different outcrops. No, this is the outcrop because we've cordoned it all off. That's right. Don't have any knowledge. Don't have any travel. Notifications. That's just the log of everything that's said. I think we are just, like, meant to just yeah. spend the time and do some digging. It's a good job you're here to talk to me because <laughs> this would be so dull otherwise Oh, me just focusing on this well this is what we were saying before we wanted it to replicate that sort of slow grind yeah but to an no. extent I, mm -hmm. I want a little bit mm -hmm. oh 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 oh, oh. <laughs> professional excavation was an experience that I'll always remember Ooh. very fondly once I took a good look at the fossils I found I'm really excited to find out what it is I must admit <laughs> my professor about it right away. Okay. It's got a bone in it. Okay, okay. Don't throw this one. Oh, there it is. It's a tiny, tiny little bone. Oh, cool. I'm going to put it in this crate. Huh? I'm going to put it in this crate. I'm going to uh -huh. put... Why can't I put it in a crate? You have to put it down and open Oh, no, it. I got to... Hang on. I got to throw it down. Huh? Then I got to plaster it. Oh, fantastic. We need to get plastered. <laughs> Miss plastering. It's so fun. In you go. Uh, how do we know that that's what it is? Later, he arrived at the excavation site in person. He's just the narrator. What I found was part of a dromaeosaur skeleton. It was an important enough discovery for a professor to reach out to media which we're happy to dig up the topic. Soon, my discovery had become a countrywide <laughs> country sensation. sensation. Oh my goodness. Hmm. Do you find, <laughs> you know, like, the the tail of the Dromiosaur, would that get countrywide coverage? I don't think it would. <laughs> Sorry. Right, give me that. Yeah, no, I, I get you. But it's, it's, you know, it's... The media know. just won, you know, like, the finished thing. I think so. I think um, the media would really pick it up if you were like, this is the biggest and most scariest drone you saw ever discovered. <laughs> I think that, that'd do it for you. Yeah. Having worked in the uh, university's press office on <laughs> their stories... Oh, look, I found another one. <laughs> we need to However, pick up the little rocks. Can you imagine the discourse on Paleo Twitter... If in the paper it said, I found it in a loose boulder at the bottom of a lake. Oh. <laughs> like, hmm? Right, put it down gently. Yep. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Wrap it up. Mm hmm. Like, I'd like to put it in there. There's plenty of room in that box. <laughs> Unknown species, unknown bone. Right, which one do you reckon it'll be? Uh, it'll be ooh. one of these little ones. Sure. I reckon it might be that one. Hmm? Do you have any other questions on the uh, Twitch chat? I've got a question on the Twitch chat. Where okay. is everyone? Oh no! We, we got three viewers. Why aren't they chatting? <laughs> They're just absorbing all the knowledge. 
Yeah, you got some professional paleontologists here. We're not just... Uh... Oh, I was right! You see? Uh, I get my, get my eye in. Mm -hmm. Get that paleontological instinct. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, this is Gatsby, everybody, that hasn't yet seen him. He is annoying. <laughs> I don't have one of those uh, Twitch, you know, like, cat vision. A cat cam. Cat cam. Mm. Because he's running about all the place. Izzy's down there. She could be on the cat cam, but she's ugly. So. It's not as beautiful as you. To me? I'm talking. No, I'm talking to the cat. You can't see my video. I wasn't talking to you, Jake. It's alright. <laughs> Jake is also beautiful, everybody. Not a question, but I would love to dig after in Antarctica. Oh, that's cool. I remember Ooh, once. Yeah. Someone asked me like, I, I can't remember what it what it was for, but someone was talking about like, you know, hey, well, maybe one of the good things of climate change is we can dig up fossils on Antarctica, and I was just kind of like, <laughs> oh, I, I, I guess. Well, um, we could, but <laughs> also, all of the rocks in Antarctica are going to be like ground to paste by glaciers. They're going to be so smoothed over. Mm -hmm. The fossils are still down there, yeah. Yeah, they are, but yeah. they it wouldn't be as easy as... Mm -hmm. Get off the microphone! Can you hear him? <laughs> no. All right, good. Um, but yeah, it's 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 an amazing point. Like, um, Antarctica is isolated for so long. It'll be really interesting. Yeah, it's a whole new continent of fossils that are <laughs> underneath the surface. And, mm -hmm. and we do get Antarctic fossils. They're just like not the easiest to get hold of. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no! <laughs> on my other just... car, I could put this on the roof. Oh, no. Just... Are we, are we at a new site, Dave? Is that what this is? Are we at a new site? Yeah, we, yeah, some, we changed yeah. site from yesterday. Mm, gotcha. I, I, Maybe I, I, I need to... <laughs> see your cat in the video now. It looks amazing. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Didn't like that. Right, well, we're going to have to leave this here. Mm -hmm. Unless I can drive it out. I think I can drive it out mm -hmm. and come Maybe back to that one. Back and forth. Yeah, it makes sense. Stop biting the microphone! Oh, we're in America, sorry. I can't hear him, so it's fine. Who opened that gate? <laughs> I'm trying to think of other related fieldwork anecdotes that can accompany this. What, to my cat biting the microphone? No, no, no. <laughs> Just... Uh, which... Why... Oh, it's straight ahead. It's none of those ways. Mm -hmm. Driving in the demo was weird. Yeah, I never saw the. Oh, I never played the demo, but I watched Caitlin's video of it, and it did look very strange. Does the driving feel any like? It feels tape? sluggish. Yeah. Uh huh. But I'm in a a giant pickup, so whatever. I'm I'm happy. Yeah, I mean. I honestly didn't expect you to be able to drive around. You know what I mean? Like they, they didn't just cut to black when you did that. You know, you actually get to do. Yeah, it. yeah. Quite there's fun. there's a lot in like the actual logistics and all mm -hmm. of that that you just wouldn't see in any other game. As you say, you would just cut to black and mm -hmm. away you go. This is actually kind of fun to you know do all the this kind of stuff to drive around to plan where you go in to look at the terrain and think where am I going to find fossils and yeah if it was just the fossil excavation it would well, it would just be that but I think varying of the gameplay actually helps quite a bit so I've got um kind of a a serious university made uh game for the Oculus Rift oh yeah that I shall be intending on playing soon and that 
is essentially just like you're in this area here mm -hmm. and you're just digging and then all of a sudden you just have the bones and that's it all right and yeah it's um it's accurate and you get some proper narration from paleontologists who know how to narrate over the top of a computer game <laughs> and but it's not it it's not as fun I guess, yeah. I didn't know you had an Oculus Rift, by the way. I remember you saying you were going to buy one with that big paleo money. Yeah, and the <laughs> big paleo money. Where is it? It's down here. I've literally never this even, is a like. Great video. <laughs> there you go. Oculus Rift. It's rubbish. Don't ever buy one. Oh, no. And I, I got mine off uh, a very um, rich man who was incredibly well groomed. And. I have never smelled anything that smells so strongly of aftershave and I associate it with the motion sickness of playing um, Oculus Rift games. So mm -hmm. now if I smell this, I feel sick. Oh no. That's so in horrible. future when I'm playing this, keep that in mind. <laughs> um, that game the that you sacrifice. Just well, I got a chainsaw out. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the game that you just mentioned, by the way, is that like like a publicly available game? You said it was a museum thing, or is it like a... Oh, it's completely free, Okay. And it's a museum thing. It's mm -hmm. like by a, a Belgian or French museum. I think I know what you mean, actually. I think I've seen something like that. Maybe. I know there was, there's definitely a game on Steam, like a VR game about um, a fossil museum, but I think it's in French. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. I almost went into some horrendous French stereotypical accent then. But you to didn't. Try and emulate it, but I didn't. <laughs> I know. Well, I remember me and Thomas were like assembling Ooh. the big list of uh, games for the paper. We um, we came across it. We'd never seen it before. But yeah, we should probably plug that maybe. Well, I got it, and I've got a headset. I'll I'll play it. Yeah, do it. The weird thing is, right, okay, so an Oculus Rift knows where the ground is. You set the mm -hmm. ground. And in this game, you go out and you go and stand... Oh, I need the fossil. You go and stand at the fossil site. And you need to start digging around. But you got to, like, reach down to the ground to dig, like, below your own feet. Mm -hmm. So I'm there trying to scoop away all this rock that's where my feet are. And... <laughs> So I'm there, like, in in real life, like, scooping away at my feet. Uh -huh. And then you you dig a little cube away, like in Minecraft. But you need to keep digging down. and But that's below the floor. So you have oh. to dig out, like, a whole rectangle. And then you fall down. And then you can dig down the next level. And so you end up in a hole. What am I doing? Okay, whatever. I got a new car. It's the same car. Thank I God. need to transfer to this back to the museum. Travel. Hmm. Right, which state is that? Is that Washington? That's Washington State. Yeah. Yes, knew it. I guess, is that up there? Is that where you found the Onotomibus? The... I right. Because up in Canada is where... No, is where I, I, I got the uh, Onotomibus, like, here or something. Okay, that's Idaho. Yeah, and mm. now we're stealing fossils in Canada. Right. <laughs> okay. To take back to Washington. Yeah. So it looks like the museum is like just outside Seattle, maybe? Like that kind of area? Don't know. Maybe. Mm -hmm. I've been all around there. I've been to Mount St. Helens. It was very nice. Oh, cool. I've I had some Mount mm. St. Helens ash. Thanks to the oh, cool. of the discovery. My uh, sibling who lived in um, in uh, Forest Grove, Oregon for a while, uh, they went to visit Mount St. Helens, but it was too uh, foggy so they couldn't see it. But <laughs> they're very proud to tell me that they've been to the gift shop, <laughs> which is delightful. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll ask Hang on. If, hmm? Let's uh, just get through the, um, the story that's going on here. Oh, sure the thing. media attention 
mm -hmm. made such a fuss, fuss that the the mayor or someone decided <laughs> to build a paleontological museum in a sports hall, which is there labelled as the uh, National Paleontology Museum or Natural History Museum, whatever, yeah. whatever it was. Uh -huh. And and we got appointed as curator straight away based on <sighs> that one fossil find. If only. If only. Amazing. Sorry, Paul, what are you saying? Oh, I mean, another great question just about how would you get your foot in the door of paleontology, basically? Like, what kind of paleontology is um, the question? Yeah, he just says if um, if you could if you would go into academic paleontology as a hobby, what is a good way to get a foot in the door? So I guess if you just want to do it as a hobby, like museums, volunteering, things like that. I mean, if you're prepared not to really make a wage from it, there's all sorts of volunteering opportunities out there. Mm. It's really hard to get money from paleontology because mm -hmm. you're competing with, you know, like hundreds of paleontology graduates every year mm -hmm. <laughs> all clamoring for the same jobs you've got to you know like what is it like one percent of all graduates or something ridiculous get a job uh, but if you want to do it if you just love fossils and you love paleontology then there's so many ways to do it and it could yeah. just be you going out and finding your own fossils yeah, that's exactly it. Like, um, the advice I often give to people is just, like, go online, find a nice area you can go to where you're allowed to look for fossils. That's really important. And if you find something that you're not quite sure what it is, send a picture of it to a, a museum or someone on Twitter, and chances are someone will be very excited to tell you what it is. Right, here we go. I think we should do our dromaeosaur and then okay. call it a night because we've been going for almost two hours my goodness i know right <laughs> that's been really fun though i'm really looking forward to getting back into doing videos again and you know what this this like whoa i got a skill tree oh my goodness well this game is actually kind of in depth it's really in depth so it's all in the management tab I'm going to put all my skills into driving. Okay. And just drive around, rally around. Yeah. Power slide. Uh huh. Wow. wow. What, what's going to be the most important skills? Mm hmm. Recognition of em employees. I have to have employees. Oh, this is starting to sound too much like work. Oh. I wanted, I wanted like the, the thrill of being a paleontologist with none of the admin, none of the bureaucracy, none of the work, mm -hmm. all of the resources, <laughs> none <laughs> of the responsibilities. Oh my gosh, uh, it's not even 2 p.m. in California. Yeah, it's nearly 10 p.m. here in the UK. I've got to drive to a, probably shouldn't say where, for a documentary <laughs> meeting tomorrow. Ooh, exciting. Mm, yeah. What was your reaction to the announcement that a team of scientists wanted to bring back the mammoth? I think we talked about this before. Yeah, it's it's a weird thing. Like it's, I would argue that the time, money, and resources that have gone into that would have probably been better spent preserving like living elephants, maybe. I don't know. It's I a think, difficult um, one, isn't it? Yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> I... um, we had, <laughs> for a little paleontology podcast I run called Paleocast, we mm -hmm. arranged a meeting, uh, an interview meeting, whatever. It's going to be a meeting for an interview. And they were going to come on and uh, have kind of like a panel discussion on mm -hmm. their project and what they were doing, why they were doing it, why it was good, blah, blah, blah. And I was going to have like a mammoth expert on and mm -hmm. it was all arranged we were just waiting for dates and then they ghosted me mm -hmm. like this is a big company that mm -hmm. I was in conversation with they were doing all the media rounds mm -hmm. and yeah they just ghosted me because I guess they didn't like the script I spent ages okay. working on that Aww. reading up about mammoths that I don't care about it's a shame yeah mammoths are like, I think they're wonderful I would, I would love to see a living mammoth, but um, I kind of would like to make sure that there are still living elephants before. 
<laughs> I don't know. It's a weird thing. I think that animal uh, de-extinction, especially just for something that's kind of flashy like that, is a bit necessary. Are they going to do it, though? And what are they going to do with the millions and millions of pounds that they've raised, dollars that they've raised for that project? Is it going to come to light? I Maybe. think, like many of these projects, that money will just mysteriously disappear. <laughs> Especially, yeah, I that think... That would um, be a worry. The wor most worrying thing of all is that, like, um, like, wasn't Elon Musk trying to get involved in this? Or something like that. <sighs> Indeed. <laughs> um, yeah. Right, what have we got here? We got an arm. Yeah, little claws. This is the dromaeosaur, yeah? This is a dromaeosaur. Yeah. Is it a foot? Hand, hand. Is it a hand? Um. What's the. You should know this. <laughs> we, sh we should know this <laughs> as professional paleontologists. <laughs> like dromaeosaurs? Well, those are definitely the, the individual. Like. Oh, it says on the wall in giant letters. Oh, wow, it sure does. I think that it's the back left limb. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's obviously like the, the, the big cost. It's late, okay, I'm tired. <laughs> and I work I'm, on doing, I'm doing really well with the prep on this. I'm shredding through it. Like, mm. if, if anyone has back feet of dromaeosaurs or, or any animals that you want the back feet of doing, I will do it so quickly and I will <laughs> fulfill my lifelong dream of being a Pez dispenser. <laughs> that should have got more of a laugh than it did I... after that build up. <laughs> it was very good. Did they want to use... <laughs> sorry, I got completely distracted by a question. I'm really sorry. So everyone's just switched off now. We have no viewers. Oh, it's all good. Someone, yeah, sorry. Did, did they want to use blood for that project? Because the T-Rex almost suggested to use blood. I have no idea. That sounds very dodgy. Uh, sorry, they used blood for the project. I don't know. Like, I, well, obviously, no way. This is very strange. Sounds fishy to me. Where, where does this bone go? Oh, on the table. <laughs> oh, it's there. It's a tiny little extra toe that I didn't see. Yeah. wonder if that closed. Yeah, there you go. This is really nice, though. Piecing all the little pieces like this together. It's clawsome. <laughs> uh, chat, do you want... More or less puns. <laughs> I have been involved slightly with this kind of work of just piecing together pieces like this. And without that little guide telling you which is which, there's individual yeah. ball board, those tall bones, it is like ridiculous trying to decide which order they go in. I, I do feel like it's taken something away um, from being <laughs> able to figure it out. I think you should have like the option of doing it without or like without without it snapping to mm -hmm. them. I get you. Because a lot of the time you are just trying to... It is a puzzle without a picture. Unless mm -hmm. you are, you know, just like a, a crazy expert. I actually really wish that when you picked up the individual bones, it would tell you the name of the bones. Yeah, oh. that'd mm -hmm. be awesome. Because as someone who... Like, I know a bit about the dinosaur bone anatomy, but I, I can't instantly like recall like every single name. Um, I think that'd be quite helpful, actually, just as like a little teaching aid. I need to set up a support structure, apparently. Oh, this is what I was talking about earlier. Like, um, you mount ah. and the bones. That's quite, that's quite fun. Like a little, not armature. Is that the right word? Uh, it can be. Hmm. Oh, so apparently they mentioned it to the designers that they would love to see that feature as well, so I think that might come in a future update. Like, 
Oh, that's me. Right, next. <laughs> Where's... Oh, the boxes are over here. Do you want to do the unknown bone, or do you want to do the tail set number two? We can do the unknown bone. Unknown bone. Mm -hmm. The oh, unknown gosh. bone zone. Apparently this is what Jack Horner said or something about the blitz, so who knows? Who even knows? What? Sorry, Jack Horner said what about what? Um. Apparently... I don't know. Apparently Jack Horner suggested using blood to clone a T-Rex. Oh, well... Oh, they're talking about, like... Oh, I see. Doesn't like T-Rex... Oh, no, he's, he's, he's... Jack Connor was doing the reverse chicken thing, wasn't he? Yes, so this is kind of the idea of there are dormant genes that you can reactivate, like, um... Mm. Like, like, yeah, it's... <laughs> again, it's just one of those weird things where... This is not... As paleontologists, we kind of occasionally hear about this and just go, what? And then we kind of <laughs> don't really think about it. It's very weird. I have no idea. It sounds like something he would say. So he, he was definitely there was definitely whole reverse engineering a chicken. I remember yeah. this. And the I one really of the wanna... biggest. Oh, sorry, go on. <laughs> I really want to tell my famous Jack Horner joke, but I don't think I'm allowed. Oh no! I'll tell you it later. All right, that was a special treat. Yeah. Um, one of the most annoying things about that whole discourse about kind of, you know, reactivating dormant genes in a chicken is that I think that's helped push this narrative that did you know that a T-Rex's closest living relative is a chicken? Which I see so often. It actually doesn't really make sense because T-Rex is equally as related to every living bird <laughs> than a chicken. But the yeah. amount of people I've talked to who just think that it's chickens specifically. It's very strange. Someone oh, wants to is... hear your Jack Horner joke. Sorry? Someone wants to hear your Jack Horner joke. I don't. I'll get in trouble. I know. I was earlier when we were talking about cowboy paleontologists, I was like, how slanderous do I want to be right now? <laughs> we need uh, one of these spray guns for me. Uh -huh. Like, if I'm going to say a bad joke. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have like a little remote activator, sort of. Yeah. Hmm. Like it. Don't get yourself banned from any SVP or anything in the future with <laughs> poor taste jokes. It was really funny though. <laughs> what about animals which died because of humans? Ah, again. What about them? Yeah, they're saying, could you bring back... Is it... Oh, is it ethical for... to... Mm. Mm. It's not ethical to, you know, displace the animals that have replaced those, potentially. Have yeah, ecosystems okay. moved on? Like, how far back do you go? Again, I think... Again, I'm not... It, it, it's all hypothetical in a way, I suppose. But I guess, again... The resources that could be spent on re, you know, uh, un, what's the word? <laughs> Unextincting? No, that's not a word. <laughs> on reviving. The extinction. Extinctioning. I don't know. The de the extinct. See, this is where I'm stuck. Anyway, what I'm getting at is that the resources and time and money that would go into that could be much better spent ensuring that animals don't continue to die because of humans. You know what I mean? It's kind of a. Yeah, I when. Don't know. When we don't have global warming and don't have wars and people that are very disadvantaged, then maybe you can start looking at that kind of stuff, I guess. <laughs> I mean, there's there's an interesting question as to whether or not you can do it scientifically, mm -hmm. but it's not a priority, I don't think, for the yeah. world. But it is something that I should probably spend more time thinking about because... In almost every stream we've done, I'm pretty sure in some of Thomas's streams, it has always come up in the chat. So it is something that a lot of paleo fans are thinking about. So, you know, maybe I need to have a think and <laughs> decide on more opinions on it. Talking more about, about animals how... like the... Oh, the dog animal. Oh, you mean the thylacine? Yeah, again, it would be neat. But 
I, do we I, have a duty to bring them back? That's a very deep question. Because... <laughs> Given how much humans have completely transformed the ecosystem of this planet, like, I don't think duty even covers it anymore. It's just kind of... We can... Our power over it is just almost indescribable, if that makes sense. So, like, you, <laughs> you can go either way. It's kind of... If we really wanted to, maybe we will. The fact that we can have all these... I don't know what I'm trying to say. It's very late. <laughs> but I, would you would you extend that to, you know, a, you would say a species, but would you say an individual? Do you have a right to bring back an individual that has been killed? You know, like oh Harambe the gorilla. Oh my goodness. I What is happening? <laughs> exactly. It's like... There are, there are so many ethical questions that it raises. Do you mm -hmm. bring back someone that was executed for a crime they didn't commit? <laughs> to what extent is that individual oh the same person? What extent is a revived mammoth the same species? I mm. guess it's a role that it plays in an ecosystem. I just think, you know, it is it's very interesting. It's not an easy question. It's, it's, it's not easy, it is very interesting. I just think my opinion's always going to be there are way more pressing ethical dilemmas within ecology and paleontology that require much more attention. Oh wow, look at all those. They look like diodes or something. Mm -hmm. I really shouldn't be this rough with something as fragile as those... I know. Um, mm -hmm. What are they called? Uh, processes? Yeah, those little... Um, Neural... Yeah, yeah. They're not neural spines, I don't think. But yeah, um... Neuro oh my gosh, neural processes? Oh, this is what I mean. I would love to quickly be told what they are, because I've been so long since I've worked on these. Um... It might be... Someone in the comments who knows <laughs> what... these things are called. Oh my goodness, I'm horrendous. Like, you Any... just wouldn't brush these. They're too small to brush. No, 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 you would just dig up pinging off into the... Uh... <laughs> You, you would not dare to touch these. You'd probably mm -hmm. embed them in, like, some resin or something to keep them safe. I don't even think you would try and remove those from the Matrix, to be completely honest. Those are so delicate. It's really cool, though, how they create that sort of interlocking... I am actually very embarrassed. I cannot remember. Google it. No one can see what you're doing. Just press on the keys really lightly and no one will know. I'll, I'll keep talking in the meantime. <laughs> hey, uh, being a paleontologist is really cool. And I just did some work on an oil rig and I was there for a week and a half looking at microfossils. And I hate microfossils, and I hate my job, but it pays lots of money, and so that was cool. But I have to live on an oil rig, which isn't cool, which means I can't do my podcast, and I can't do gaming, and if there's anything I like doing, it's those two things. But I like making money more, doing, you know, something in a field that is still paleontology. It's important. So, uh, yeah, I saw about... 20,000 fossils or something that I identified in a week. I oh my know. god. It was hard. Hard going. <laughs> Look, you just keep googling. Like, the chat will respond. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, everyone give me sympathy in the chat. Um, and... I still think processes was enough to really cover it. But, yeah. Oh, so what you're saying is that you couldn't find it on Google? No. <laughs> not saying that necessarily <laughs> I more just want to quickly move on <laughs> alright moving quickly on <laughs> just just pretend that you googled and it was processes well any extension is just referred to as a process but I don't know the specific name oh, this is really hard they're absolutely tiny mm -hmm. Bzz. <laughs> they, these would just break instantly. Mm -hmm. They'd be so brittle. Mm -hmm. Are they... I guess once they put them together, it'll be easier to see. 
<laughs> oh, come on! <laughs> you would not dremel these. Mm -hmm. They would just be powder by the time you finished. Mm -hmm. That is why. Okay, they're getting the monotony of the <laughs> processing <laughs> correct. Uh huh. But is it a good thing that you can just like shred your way through it? Like this, or is, does it take... Would it be more fun if you could actually destroy fossils Ooh. in this game? Mm -hmm. And so you actually have to be careful. I think that the thing is, if you were to add that element to the gameplay, I think you'd have to change the entire story. You can no longer be <laughs> this like hero that is, you know, um, kind of suddenly found this amazing thing and has this whole museum made for them and everything like that. I think you have to be some lowly intern <laughs> in the basement. <laughs> I think it, like the whole tone of the game would change, I think, if you could accidentally break things. I just picked up my Dremel and I knew instantly what I had to do because <laughs> I'm so manly. I just pulled the Dremel out of my beard and started prepping away. Like a tongue-in-cheek sort of parody game about a really incompetent <laughs> paleontologist who thought he was incredible. We could call it Call him Jake. Um, <laughs> 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 oh my gosh, Natalia comes to the rescue. Oh, uh, what? <laughs> it's like a Vices. A uh, uh, what? It's in the chat. Isn't that like a Egyptian god? <laughs> Do you know what's awful is that as we were struggling over that, the all I was thinking in the back of my mind was like, at least my good friends aren't seeing me struggle. <laughs> Hi, Natalia. <laughs> Yeah, actual paleontologist in the chat. Hell yeah. My goodness. Oh no, I'm just going to see but how bad I am uh, being a paleontologist. <laughs> and how bad my jokes are. I'll tell her my uh, Jack Horner joke later. Oh my goodness. But yeah, Natalia, I don't know how long of this you've been watching, but we are... <laughs> Hopefully not most... very long. <laughs> we are the most heroic <laughs> paleontologist that has ever existed. We just, like, stumble across things, <laughs> and suddenly everything works out perfectly for us. It's amazing. Yeah. Like, the, the media got involved because I was so manly and dug up some dromaeosaurs from the bottom we, of the pond. We found one dromaeosaur fossil, and they opened a national museum for us that we instantly became the curator of about a week after we graduated. <laughs> It's kind of like the legend of King Arthur or something. Mm. This is my Excalibur. Yeah, I now want to see a game like this where you just play as like a real garbage guy. <laughs> just like... <laughs> oh, I, I think we should have a version of this game where you are... Uh, you, you are aspiring to this, but you're just really a dino weenie. Mm -hmm. Dino fanboy. But... I know we've been making fun, but watching all those 3D models interlock together like that was really satisfying. Yeah, That's look, I've got this tail. Mm -hmm. This really fragile, don't drop it tail. Don't throw it. <laughs> Come here. Get oh on there. Goodness. Right, it's just going to have to float in midair. Yeah. yeah. There we go. We're working on this little dromaeosaur. <laughs> it's it's kind of sad that you can see it before it's made. It'd be mm -hmm. fun to, you know, like build it as you go and see the stepwise construction of what you mm -hmm. found. Mm, absolutely. Is, are its hands right? Yeah, okay. Do they poke down like that? Uh, is that look at it from like the front on. Well, the, yeah, the, the, the facing right. inwards, which is correct yeah but did they have that wrist bending Ooh. I... or do they go straight out oh yeah maybe it i can't remember like, yeah <laughs> it looks more like the kind of feathers hanging down doesn't it um i'm 100% sure and i'm scared to say anything now because natalia's watching me <laughs> <laughs> natalia's now said the name of the person that i was trying to slander earlier so that wasn't me that said that so <laughs> Let's look at this museum that they've built for us. Oh, it is oh, yeah, just yeah. the museum. Mm -hmm. This is what we were in before. 
Yeah, so oh, we're sweet. kind of um, time, No, wait, this, this is somewhere time. else. We're in the middle of town. Oh, yeah. Well, this I, is I like we prime real out. estate. It really is. Oh, I want a cup of coffee. <laughs> it's definitely Seattle. There's like coffee signs. Yeah, cool. The City Museum of Paleontology. That was the National Museum of Paleontology before, I'm fairly sure. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure it was, but anyway. Ooh, one of those and this is where it's all going to be. Hmm? This is where it's all going to be. Hmm. This is where the museum's going to be when we're finished in, you know, like 50 streams time. It is quite fun that you could slowly build it up over time, though. I think every paleontologist I know has some, like, and vision of how they would organize a museum. And I know only a few that have actually gotten the privilege of designing a museum. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's not very gig. easy. <laughs> no, but it's a dream gig. Yeah. Right, well, I think we should leave it here. We've been waffling for 2 hours, 12 <laughs> minutes, and 49 seconds. I really enjoyed this, and people asked some really cool questions. That they definitely did, keep but me on not my enough. Toes. <laughs> I know, ask, but like... Ask one question each before we go. The questions that I get, like, in a museum are so different to the ones that the chat provides, so I always enjoy it. Yeah, what have you always wanted to know from either Jake or I about paleontology? Oh, no. We will answer it before going to bed. <laughs> You got like 10 seconds. There's a chat delay, don't forget, so. 10 seconds plus another 10 seconds. <laughs> See, no one no one wants anything. They all know everything, they think. It's all good. I, yeah. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's Dave, all good. We're going. No, they finish worry. the stream. No, no, no. Right. I'm going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. It's been right. a while since I've done this, okay? We'll do another one at some undefined time in the future, but thank you all for coming and, you know, keeping us company. So we're not just really? doing this to an empty room of people, mm -hmm. empty lobby. You, mm -hmm. You're all cool. You're all the best. Yeah. So, right. uh, yeah, let's hang up and yeah. see you all another time. Bye I gotta find everyone. out how to hang up. Mm -hmm. All right. Bye. Shut up, Natalia. God damn it. <laughs>